Greetings, S.T. Van Aresdale, editor of TheReeler.com. Welcome back to another episode of Reeler TV. And last time we were here in Washington Square Park, we were talking about summer films. And now it is fall in New York, no doubt about it. And we thought we'd just come back out and why not talk about some fall films. And it's a very busy week for fall films. In fact, we've got Margot at the Wedding, a redacted opening up. We're going to talk about those films with Karen Wilson, who's the editor of Cinecultist. And then right now, we're going to have a chat with Tamara Jenkins, the director of The Savages, which opens in New York November 28th. The Savages stars Philip Seymour Hoffman and Laura Linney as a pair of siblings suddenly required to take care of their ailing, aging father. Dad. Hi, Dad. Do something! There's a doctor. He's not that kind of doctor, Dad. I said my boy was a doctor. Doctor philosophy teaches theater. Like board play? No, like theater of social unrest. I got us an interview. It's called Green Hill Manor. Sounds like an insane asylum. You're an idiot. Can we just play the game? I'm funny. <laughs> we'll need to know your father's burial or cremation plans. What kind of question is that? Something they want for the records. Who? The people who run the place. What the hell kind of hotel is it? We haven't heard from you in a while, at least, in, oh, the, at least theatrically we yeah. haven't heard. I know you've been busy, you've been working, of course. I do but my own weird things, yeah. Sure. So, I mean, but we're, we're, we're looking forward to get back in the theater. And I guess what was that turnaround time like? And I guess what took Why? so long for the Savages, you know, nine years from Slum Slum Beverly oh Hills God, to so the Savages? Disturbing. I know it's such a long time and I wish I had a really good example. Like, well, I started a uh, clinic for, and I found the cure for, um, I was writing, you know, I worked on some projects that didn't happen. One project for a couple of years that didn't happen. Um, I, you know, obviously I was doing things for money, you know, like writing, uh, writing jobs and stuff like that. But, um, and then getting this movie made probably took four years. So I don't know. Then there's like a couple in there that I probably can't justify, but um, it takes a long time to get movies made. I mean, you know, I wasn't trying to make it for nine years. I'd say maybe four years I was trying to get it going or something like that. So, um, and then, so I, but, uh, so I spent a lot of time writing and, um, I mean, I was fortunate in that I was offered things to direct, but nothing that really uh, compelled me. And it was, I guess, because I had made a movie about an adolescent, sort of a teenage uh, scenario that I was sort of um, often offered directing jobs that were like, you know, high school teen comedies. Um, which wasn't really what I was compelled to do. This is a bulletproof cast. You got Philip Seymour Hoffman, Laura Linney, Philip Bosco, all terrific in this film. And I guess as a director, how do you balance the obligation you have to help them craft their performances and kind of that instinct to just let these amazing actors just kind of just go and do their thing? There was just something about Laura and Phil when I came upon them as the team for the movie that they were the, it was like casting lovers or something, you know? The, uh, like a love story where the chemistry really has to work because the whole movie is riding on this frisson, this dynamic between these two people. And um, uh, there was just, and so the first time they came to my apartment, which was, you know, the first time I saw them together in my room, in my house where I had written the script, like there they were materialized. There was just a kind of inherent dynamic that just came with the ingredients, you know. I poured these two things into the pot and crossed my fingers. And they're so on their game, you know, that sort of once after a couple of days, it was just happening and I had nothing to do with it, you know. I mean, the material was like carrying them through what had to happen and they just they were sort of in the zone you know when you're in, when you're a film student or something you think that being a director is like getting in an actor's face all the time and like getting in there with them but really uh, the balance between sort of letting go and letting something kind of take shape before your eyes and not getting in the way of the process is interesting and it's a very um complicated thing to negotiate with every actor because every actor needs something different she's only known this guy a year is that short would you marry someone you'd only know in a year? In Margo at the wedding, the laughs come fast and furious. Are you working on anything now? How about you? I hate that question. What do you do? You ask me. And they're sharp enough to draw blood. I'll punch your sister. You've never hit anyone. I have too. Who? Lots of people. You don't know them. They're not around because I punched them. Nicole Kidman, Jennifer Jason Lee, Jack Black, Margo at the wedding. Rated R. Starts Friday in select theaters. All right, we are here in Washington Square with Karen Wilson, the editor of Cinecultist. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. A little cold, but good. 
it's definitely fall in New York. There's no doubt about it. So speaking of fall, we're talking about fall movies today. And so you've seen a couple that are coming out this week. What is your favorite film that's coming out this weekend? Uh, well, Redacted is an interesting film that's coming out. And then I loved Margot at the Wedding that's coming out. Really? So, so what specifically is so great about Margot? Because, I mean, people are kind of divided on this film. Well, I feel like it's definitely a step forward from Squid and the Whale. It's a film also about families. Um, it's about two sisters, um, one who's getting married out in the Hamptons, and the other sister comes out after many years of estrangement to, with her son to attend the wedding. But the performances by Nicole Kidman and Jennifer Jason Lee as the two sisters are really, really wonderful. You know, they've, there's been a little bit of talk that Baumbach was influenced by... Um, Romare's films, and I definitely see that in terms of the sort of observational qualities of it, and the sort of, he's very interested in using a lot of natural light, and of the film looking as though it's just happening, and it's not constructed, and I thought that was just gorgeous, and just really well, well formed and well thought out. All right, now Redacted is another film that has divided audiences quite a bit. Yes. What did you think of that one? Well, Redacted is a film um, about the Iraq War. Um, Brian De Palma took a real incident where American soldiers attacked an Iraqi girl and raped her in her home. And a lot of the um, evidence that came up in the case came from people's blogs and from letters home. And so Brian De Palma is very interested in playing with the multi-layers of media that we're using now to understand what's happening in Iraq. And I mean, the major problem, I think, is that it comes across as Brian De Palma wagging his finger at the American public saying, you know, I understand what's happening in Iraq and it's bad. And he is the only one who comes off on the moral high ground. And the rest of the audience is kind of berated and by this footage that's so graphic and brutal and not complex. All right, well, thank you very much to Karen Wilson for joining us on Realer TV. Thanks also to Tamara Jenkins. Make sure you check out The Savages and all the other films coming out in New York. You can read about them on therealer.com. Happy fall to you. I'm ST Van Airsdale, signing out.